Hello YouTube, my name is Nero and today we have some Call of Duty Advanced Warfare in another episode of Dear Nero, which is the weekly series here on my channel, where subscribers send me in fan mail and or fan questions, and I do the best to go and answer them. The cover on the gameplay you're watching right now, I only know what you would call this game mode, we can just call it the Old West game mode, we can call it the Red Dead game mode, the Cowboy game mode, essentially this is an open lobby that I did on the Xbox One, and I had myself and 8 subscribers on my team versus 9 subscribers on the other team, it is domination here on Comeback, and we are all running around with a preset class I put together, that class includes the M1 Irons, and of course you'll see a lot of people throughout this gameplay, those are the people I actually had them are going to be wearing their cowboy hats and their cowboy boots and whatnot and it's just a fun little game mode we played i thought it was pretty fun sad to say that in 2015 on the xbox one and on the playstation 4 which are quote unquote next gen consoles even though they've been current for about two years now we don't actually have the option to play any game modes in private match that aren't like domination kill confirmed or team deathmatch like your standard ground war style of game modes like i wanted Right? I wanted to play Michael Myers. I wanted to play Michael Myers. It's a classic open lobby style of a game mode, but you couldn't have more than nine people on one team. How Michael Myers works is one person on one team, up to 17 people on the other team, and that's how you kind of play it, and you can't do that for every reason. Like, it's 2015, and the Call of Duty game that's out right now, we don't have the amount of options that we had in 2007 with Call of Duty 4 in their private matches. So I really don't know what's going on with that. I wish that's something they could... They could probably easily fix that thing, but, you know, with the game, you know, basically coming to an end in about a month's time when Black Ops 3 comes out. I don't imagine they're actually going to be doing that, but who knows? They might end up doing that, and hopefully Black Ops 3, we get uh, a lot better options when it comes to the private matches, because right now, it's like, well, we basically have to play, like, competitive-style game modes where I just, like, you know, pick the gun for everybody, and we always kind of mess around with it and stuff like that, as compared to if we want to play fun-style game modes like hide-and-seek, Michael Myers, stuff like that, we can't, because you can only have up to nine people on one team, and, you know, you need to have, like, 17 people if you want to play something like Michael Myers or hide-and-seek or anything like that, but regardless, ladies and gentlemen, the footage you're going to be seeing in this episode of Dear Nero is going to be from an open lobby. Once again, it is uh, running around here with the M1 Irons cowboy idea uh, for this first game. And the second game is actually going to be with the Cell 3 Cauterizer. And it's actually kind of funny because I was like, the Cell 3, this gun's not that great, you know? And some people were like, well, maybe it's not that bad. And so I had everybody using it in a game. At the end of that game, everyone's like, yeah, that gun's terrible. I hate that gun. And <laughs> so you'll be seeing that gameplay as well. And um, it was, it was something weird happened, I suppose, with my capture card. The Cell 3 gameplay, there's no audio. I don't know what happened to it. It's something I've noticed that happens a lot when I'm using the Elgato HD60. I wonder if it's uh, something that's just wrong with the card itself, something I'm doing wrong. I really don't know, but I notice I do have a lot of gameplays where randomly the audio is completely re uh, just removed from the game. So we'll have to see if we can do anything about that. But ladies and gentlemen, without further ado, let's hop into the questions for this week's episode of Dear Nero. The first question he is going to write, Dear Nero, with all things considered, Call of Duty isn't nearly as popular in the campaign side of the game as multiplayer, and in most cases, it is a third game mode. What do you think Call of Duty could do to attract more fans of single-player shooters? Sincerely, Josh from Philadelphia, Pennsylvania. So Josh, one of the big uh, downsides I'd say people think about the Call of Duty campaign, like when I personally think of the Call of Duty campaign, I think of it as a pretty fun experience. I've never really been disappointed by a Call of Duty campaign. I've been disappointed by the ending of a Call of Duty campaign, <coughs> Ghosts. Oh my goodness, I hate that ending. But uh, overall, I've never really been super disappointed by a Call of Duty campaign. I know what I'm getting into. And what you're getting into with a Call of Duty campaign, you're getting into a campaign that's going to be roughly four to six hours at the most. It's generally going to be very on rails, right? There's really going to be uh, no real room for exploration, no real room for you know, doing different things. Basically, you're playing through a movie, right? That's what a lot of Call of Duty campaigns are. And if you want to play it on any kind of a difficulty, like you play on the hardened mode or the veteran mode, which I generally play on veteran. I'm doing a, play, a playthrough of Advanced Warfare's campaign on my Let's Play channel. We're doing it on hardened, though, because veteran, you guys know, there's a lot of trial and error in veteran. I don't think it would make for very good videos. So we're playing on hardened because it's going to be, uh, it's going to be difficult, but not too difficult, right? And so, you're basically, you know, you're, you're slowly advancing forward, taking out waves of enemies, going through, grabbing objectives, doing this, doing that. Occasionally, you have a stealth mission. But Call of Duty campaigns, I think they're more there for story and not really there for gameplay. Like, the Call of Duty gameplay is not very interesting. You know, you start off with a gun, and that's the same gun that you saw in the multiplayer. And you may pick up another gun off a dead body or something. You may find a special gun, like there's certain... Uh, levels in advanced warfare where oh boy there's an em1 randomly or like randomly laying here let's grab that em1 will perform a little bit differently 
as compared to the multiplayer, which is nice. I don't think that's necessarily a bad thing, but the Call of Duty campaign has always been kind of like an action movie that is really on rails. There's really no messing it up. There's really no exploration. And that's because that's what they want you to have. You know, they don't want to spend all their time on the campaign. They don't want to add in a ridiculous amount of Easter eggs and a ridiculous amount of side objectives and things for you to do. They basically want to tell you this story that's on rails. And it's kind of like an action movie that you can just really enjoy. You know, you'll play for four or six hours, enjoy every mission of it, and really come away with like, wow, that was a pretty good story. That was a pretty epic campaign. There was a lot going on, and I thought it was fun. As compared to some other games, which are maybe a little bit more open world, have a little bit more of an exploration aspect to them. You know, they're not really shooting for that. They're shooting for a four or six hour campaign. That's what they've always had in Call of Duty, and they're kind of setting up the world, and they want you to also be playing the other game modes. You know, they put a lot of time into the multiplayer, obviously, and they put a lot of time into the third game mode, which is going to be like zombies or spec ops or extinction or what have you. And there's a lot going on in Call of Duty. You know, I I, I don't think that necessarily the campaigns are bad. I like the campaigns, but I don't think they're ever going to win like campaign of the year or anything like that. Like it's just something that doesn't really happen because there's other games out there which don't even really have multiplayer. They're solely you know, a single player FPS game. And their whole point is to provide you this amazing single player experience. I don't think Call of Duty can necessarily compete with that while still bringing you a fantastic Zombies experience or an Extinction experience or Spec Ops experience or what have you, as well as having the for the world class multiplayer that they have. And we can call it world class. The Call of Duty multiplayer has been fantastic ever since it's been released. And uh, yeah, so I, I think that's the reason why Call of Duty's campaign never really changes. It's definitely kind of like a niche little market, very on rails, kind of an action movie style of, of, a, of an experience, but I don't think it's necessarily a bad thing. Next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, I was wondering, how is your fantasy team doing since Des Bryant and Jordan Cameron are hurt? Thanks, Craigles from Xbox Live. Craigles, you have no freaking idea. Perhaps you do. Perhaps you do. I'm actually opening up my fantasy team right now just so I can look at every single person that's on there. Ah, uh, the Pittsfield Panthers have hit the injury bug. We've caught the injury bug this season, and it's definitely not looking very good for me. So, my first round draft pick was Des Bryant, who, of course, is hurt. All right, that kind of stinks. My second round draft pick was Tony Romo, who I wanted to have that combo, Tony Romo to Des Bryant. Guess who's out till week 11? Tony Romo. So both of them are hurt. Jordan Cameron is now hurt. He may be playing in this week's game. We're not entirely sure yet. But uh, Jordan Cameron, who's my starting tight end, is also hurt. Oh, okay. Now Tony Romo's out. At least I drafted a good backup quarterback rather early. I got Jay Cutler. Oh, he's also hurt and doubtful for this week's game. So we have to go all the way down to my third string quarterback, which I had Johnny Manziel, who initially was like kind of like a joke, like, hey, Johnny Manziel, but he was actually doing pretty good in the first few weeks of the season. But then Josh McCown comes back for the Browns. Suddenly, Johnny Manziel is on the bench, and he's now the second string quarterback in Cleveland. So I'm literally going to the free agent wire to pick up a quarterback just to try and start for my team, which is horrible. I end up getting Brandon Whedon for the Dallas Cowboys. Basically, Tony Romo's backup is now my starter on my fantasy team. Team. And it is, oh my goodness, it is rough. I did okay replacing Des Bryant because we run two receivers and one flex in my league. So I have Jeremy Macklin and Larry Fitzgerald who freaking came out of nowhere. I had those two guys already. And on the bench, I can like swap people in and out for my flex. Right now, I actually have Marcus Colston there in my flex, but he is not doing amazing right now either. And to replace uh, Jordan Cameron, I have Ladarius Green, who is the tight end for the San Diego Chargers, who's kind of taking over for Antonio Gates. So uh, yeah, that's my team. I'm one and one, it's um, it's not looking good. We definitely caught the injury bug this year, and hopefully, I can just sustain a decent enough team to actually make the playoffs. Because come playoff time in fantasy football, Tony Roma will be back, Des Bryant will be back, Jordan Cameron. I don't think he's gonna have that long of an injury, but he'll be back. My team will be you know in full force, hopefully, by the time we can actually get to the fantasy playoffs, and I can hopefully actually be a member of that fantasy playoff bracket. Next question, he is going to write. Dear Nero, I need your advice. Before I start, I want for you to sincerely believe that I am not lying. I am currently 14 years old, and I own a 2008 Chevy Silverado that I bought with my own money. I paid $1,000 as a down payment, and I'm paying $340 a month. I'll spend around $11,000 in total. I'm considering buying either a really badass audio system for it, two 12-inch subwoofers and amplifier, brand new door speakers on all four doors, and a touchscreen head unit. I'm not even sure what that is. 
is, or just saving my money every paycheck to pay the truck off faster, what do you think I should do? An answer would be greatly appreciated, though it's okay if you don't. Sincerely, Chris from Texas. So Chris went on like, a very long time in this thing, which leads me to believe that he's telling the truth. He's like, no, seriously, this is a real thing. I just really would like your advice. Please don't doubt them. A 14-year-old that bought a 2008 truck. You know, he's really trying to convince me that he does that. He explained what he does for a job and everything like that. And that's fine. That's fine. It's actually really, really cool that you're able to get something that you like. It's obvious you have a genuine passion for automobiles and things like that. So that's definitely pretty cool. What do I think you should do? I think you should totally try to pay off the truck rather than decking it out with an audio system. See, right now you're 14 years old. You technically aren't even able to legally drive the vehicle. Now, I'm not... I'm not crazy. I live in a small town. I grew up in a different small town. And I have friends from other small towns, you know, especially if you live like out in the country and stuff like that. It's not uncommon whatsoever for people being like 13 years old, 14, 15 years old, uh, driving their parents' vehicles. You know, my friend uh, grew up on a farm. I used to spend a lot of time out there on his farm uh, because he was just a giant open fields and horses and animals. And he had like a GameCube inside. So come nighttime, we play video games during the day. We're out playing football or playing with the animals or helping around the farm and whatnot. It was like some of my favorite uh, memories of my childhood actually were uh, playing around on his farm and you know he he knew how to drive her since he was you know 13 or so because they had like another house that was like down the road that they were renting to some members of their family and we'd occasionally go down there and like split wood for him and whatnot and he'd be like hey hop in the truck and so we both hop in the truck my friend who's like 13 would drive us down there and you know it just it's not uncommon for that really to be the case I would assume Chris from Texas here maybe has a similar thing uh, judging from the job he has, which I'm not going to talk about the job he has, but judging from the job that he has and the fact that he's bought a truck already and whatnot, I'm going to assume that he's already driving, but of course it's not legal for you to drive just yet. In two years' time, all right, in two years' time, you will be 16, and you will actually be legally allowed to get your license, or you're going to have to get your permit first, but then you'll be able to get your license. If you start paying it off now, right, and you keep continuously working at it and put a little bit towards uh, paying it off, you got your $304 every single month and maybe putting in a little bit more. So by the time you're 16, by the time you get your permit, and by the time you get your full-on license, which I think it varies state by state, but I think you have to wait six months after you get your permit before you get your license. Correct me if I'm wrong on that. I think that varies state to state. That's at least how it is. Uh, here in Pennsylvania. Uh, but yeah, by the time you do that, by the time you actually have your full-on license, if you work at it, you continue with your job and whatnot, you could probably have your truck paid off. Then you own your truck. You can do whatever you want with it. You know, there's nothing really worse than still making payments on your truck and then realizing that you lost your job. You can no longer make the payments. Bam, you have to get rid of your truck, especially after you did all those upgrades and stuff like that to it. You definitely don't want that to happen. Uh, generally, just a rule of thumb in life, always try to take the responsible route. Like, of course, it would be cool right of course it would be cool to buy a new badass audio system and whatnot but you should really try and save what you have of your money and try and pay off the vehicle so it's actually yours rather than somebody else's because right now you're still paying it off so you don't want to obviously lose your truck i would definitely recommend paying it off and saving your money to be able to try and pay it off a little bit earlier than expected and then once that happens go all out man have some fun Next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, what do you think about Grand Theft Auto 5 on last gen not getting any more updates due to running out of memory? Keep up the amazing job, Brad from Venezuela. So Brad, this is something that every week, man, I get questions regarding around this, this kind of a topic. Not specifically Grand Theft Auto 5, but also Call of Duty and a lot of other games. People are getting upset that the Xbox 360 and the PlayStation 3 are not being supported nearly as much as they kind of expect expected those platforms to be supported, right? Grand Theft Auto 5 is a giant game. I was honestly surprised because keep in mind when I did play GTA 5, which uh, I played it for a long time actually. I got up by pretty high levels. We like we basically know like the game. The multiplayer is really addictive. It really, really was. I loved the open world aspect of it. I loved collecting cars. I loved the mystery of it all. You know, trying to get better and better houses and trying to find different cars and you know the the ever the heists that were always looming on the horizon but never actually came for two years. And you know, just it was a really fun experience. The Grand Theft Auto Five multiplayer. I made videos of it. My believe it or not, of all the montages I made on my YouTube channel here, my most successful one was my sniper montage and from Grand Theft Auto Five and it was a really fun game. It really, really was. But I was really surprised they could take a game and make it look that good and have it be as giant and open as it was and have it still work on the 360 and the PlayStation 3. Those are very old systems. They really, really are. So I completely believe them when they say that after a bunch of updates, we're kind of just out. We can't really put anything else onto these platforms at this point. Like, we have completely, you know, we've milked this hardware for everything it's worth. We can't do anything else with it. I completely believe them when they say that. So yeah, it stinks that you're basically going to 
I'm not going to be getting any more updates for GTA 5. And the same thing happens for Call of Duty. And I'm not sure exactly how true this is because you look at like Advanced Warfare and you're like, oh, we can't fit these brand new guns onto these systems. I really think it's more of an exclusivity deal as compared to anything else. But, you know, they can't add in new weapons like the AK-47, the M16, the Cell 3, coming up the MP40, coming up the M1911. Uh, all these weapons are not going to be on the 360 and PlayStation 3 because they quote unquote ran out of room. I'm not so sure how true that is because adding weapons to a game as compared to adding all the crazy stuff they're adding into GTA 5 online, I really don't know if that's true. But at the same time, guys, we're coming up on two years. We're coming up on two years that the Xbox One and the PlayStation 4 have actually been out. You know, those other platforms, they are going to become obsolete eventually. Eventually, they're not going to be able to keep up. I think what a lot of people are dreaming right now is that the console that they bought back in 2005 is going to last them all the way up until 2025, which is not going to be the case, guys. It's It's been 10 years that console has been out. You know, 360 and PlayStation 3 have been out for about 10 years now. And it's going to get to the point where they're not going to be able to keep up. You know, they, uh, they've upgraded the hardware, and I, I will admit, the Xbox One and PS4 are, they're not spectacular. In terms of, like, in terms of the specs of the systems themselves, they're not spectacular. You know, you can definitely get a lot better from a low-end gaming PC as compared to those things, but uh, they're still a lot better than what the 360 and what the PlayStation 3 was, right? They're a lot better. And so eventually, we're going to continue to get stuff on these new systems. On the Xbox One and PS4, we're going to continue to get new stuff for these systems, and people on the 360 and PS3 are going to be left sitting there like, well, well, I mean, I guess we're not going to be getting anything else. Like, you're going to get, like, the base game a lot of the time, but a lot of the extra stuff, they're going to have to be cutting out. For example, Ground War. I still don't understand why they don't have this. But uh, Ground War, you know, you haven't had Ground War in on the 360 PS3 versions in a couple of years now. Call of Duty Ghost and Advanced Warfare, you haven't had Ground War in there, which is weird. It really is. It's weird that they can't fit Ground War somehow, but... um. You know, it just, it's a matter of you're going to eventually have to upgrade. If you want to continue buying brand new games and getting new experiences, you're going to have to either become a PC gamer or you're eventually going to have to upgrade. And I understand that not everybody has the money to upgrade right away. That's completely understandable. But I'm just saying it's been two years. And if gaming is a giant part of your life and you play Call of Duty or whatever every single day, you know, I don't think it'd be too big of a stretch to put away ten dollars every paycheck or something like that and then eventually be able to you know go ahead and purchase yourself a brand new console i don't think that's entirely out of the case especially since it's been two years and if you were to have actually put 10 or 15 dollars away every single paycheck and kind of like a little savings fund for your console for the hobby that you spend so much time on you'd probably be able to purchase a console by now so i'll definitely say it stinks it for sure it stinks and of course there's always that question of are they really running out of memory are they just trying to intentionally hold things back it's, it's by Microsoft and Sony, you know, putting money in the pockets of these developers to not give last-gen systems any new features to try and encourage them to buy a new system. Is that possible? Sure, it's completely possible, but we have no proof of that actually happening. And uh, yeah, it definitely does stink, though, that those consoles are going to become more and more obsolete, and people that maybe necessarily don't want to upgrade, they are going to eventually have to upgrade if you want to continue playing the newest games and having the newest features and things like that. Next question, he writes... Dear Nero, do you think it would be a good idea for Black Ops 3 to have a quote-unquote follow-the-leader type playlist or game mode where each team will be made up of lower-ranked players and one high-ranked player on each team with different ways to support their teams? Brian from Pennsylvania. Brian, that is a... <laughs> Is that reverse boosting the game mode? Like, I don't, I, don't, I don't understand, like, the concept here. So I think the idea is, like, okay, so there's going to be, you know, four, five terrible players and one good player on one team, and then five terrible players and one good player on the other team, and they kind of have to duke it out, whereas the good players will have some extra things to support their other teammates. Like, I don't even necessarily know how that would work. And just judging from, like, the question here, like, judging from the way, like, you, you wrote up this question, you structured it, it really sounds like reverse boosting the game mode, where basically the entire other team is going to be all terrible players with the exception of one good player and it's going to be easier for those good players to get game plays and have fun destroy people which uh, the entire idea of like reverse boosting in call of duty it's oh God, i could go on for so long about it, and i probably will especially around the time that i'm going to be doing my report card of advanced warfare i did like the mid-year report card but like four or five six months ago and we're going to be doing the full-on report card for advanced warfare where we go through and we create every single aspect of the game i do want to make a video talk about reverse boosting and call of duty and how, how it really is a terrible thing how it actually is a very very bad thing and how it's kind of really plaguing a lot of a lot of youtube channels and a lot of players and whatnot and it's actually building around this idea that sure it's okay to continuously try to be up on bad players try and be up on lower ranked players and things like that you know 
Uh, it's definitely not a good thing. It's totally not a good thing. And the idea of a follow the leader style game mode where a bunch of low ranked players, like how are you even plan on ranking these people? How do you rank a high ranked player? Like it's, it really sounds like reverse boosting the game mode where <laughs> I don't even know how that would possibly work. But yeah, the idea of reverse boosting, it's bad. Uh, the idea of buying God accounts, it's bad. It's bad for the community as a whole. It's bad for you as a player. It's bad for the people that you're inevitably going to be stomping on. It's just not a good thing in general. And I really wish like this entire acceptance of people essentially cheating to get gameplays would really just kind of go away you know over the years in call of duty it i i don't understand it like you look at like the the way the community was several years ago versus how they are now these things have changed so ridiculously and it just i i don't really understand it like you look back and this is this is a war i'm never gonna win but i'll briefly mention it and i'm if you guys disagree that's perfectly fine i can definitely see your point of view but back in the day mod controllers were a bad thing you if you've paid extra for a mod controller you were a bad player you were kind of a jerk like look at you you have a mod controller and nowadays every Everybody's playing with a scuff controller. It's like, okay, that's like kind of the same thing. You got trigger stops on there to make it so you can shoot faster than anybody that doesn't have a scuff controller. You got these back paddles so you can literally jump and aim at the same time without having to play claw. And you got these special grips on the side. Like, you have a modded controller. It's a modified controller. And yet, the entire community, whereas they used to hate that idea, now everybody embraces it because some of their favorite YouTubers and pro players endorse that product. And then you look at like reverse boosting and like abusing skill based matchmaking. There's some really popular gameplay channels and big YouTubers out there that were like, yeah, I do this. And then a bunch of people just automatically agree. They're like, oh yeah, that's perfectly fine. I like reverse boosting. I'm going to pay for a God account, which has horrible, horrible stats so I can constantly face bad players and make videos showing people how good I am at Call of Duty, even though I'm intentionally going out of my way to face the worst players possible, which really defeats the entire purpose of trying to prove that you're a good player if you have to intentionally go out of your way and pay money in some cases to face terrible players. Like, it, I, it's, it really defeats the entire purpose of, of the exercise. I don't understand how the community has gotten to where it is right now and there's a recent video went up by keemstar talking about the current state of the call of duty community i may do a reply video to that particular video but we'll have to see but yeah the idea of like reverse boost the game mode i definitely would not like to see in call of duty nor would it actually work because you just really basically said so how about forever and ever you know five tad bad players on one team and one good player and then same thing for the other team they just go at it like i just don't see that working but the idea of having like a game mode where you can in some way have like this overlord would you call it i don't know who is going to be supporting their teammates similar to what we saw in the battlefield franchise where there's a player that is, is even, isn't even on the map. I think he had to like run it from a tablet or something like that. Where basically like they could you know see the entirety of the map. They could drop down care packages for their teammates. They could you know uh, tell teammates to go to certain objectives. You know if they were to fill up a bar or something like that, they would be able to drop down like some kind of a vehicle for them, like a tank or something along those lines. Like uh, having something like that, like an Overwatch style thing, that might be interesting. But I just don't see how it would really fit into a Call of Duty game. Next question, he is going to write, Dear Nero, so I recently updated to Windows 10. I'm going to jump in here. So did I. I actually recently updated Windows 10 as well, going from Windows 7. So I think I'm pretty, uh, I think I'm in a pretty good spot to answer this question. Continuing on with this question, and long story short, my Sony Vegas Pro 13 doesn't work when rendering a video. I used to have Windows 8 and Vegas worked like a charm, exporting 1080p 60fps videos. Now on Windows 10, the render time seems to have doubled for me, and it will sometimes freeze slash crash depending on what pictures I have over the video. I know you recently upgraded to Windows 10, so my question is, are you experiencing any of these problems with Vegas? And if so, do you have any tips that would be greatly appreciated? Mike from Connecticut. So Mike, I have not really been having any of these issues whatsoever. I am using Sony Vegas Pro 12, right, which is actually like a an older version of Vegas as compared to the one you're using, and I've had no troubles whatsoever. My initial impressions, honestly, of Windows 10, if any of you guys are out there, they're like, should I upgrade to Windows 10? I'm not entirely sure if I like it. I love it. I mean, this is coming from somebody who is still on iOS 6, right? This uh, this is no joke. This is a picture I put on Twitter. This is like just a, a screen cap from my iPhone 4S, which I refuse to upgrade my phone as well. I'm a guy that doesn't like change, and therefore I don't upgrade things a lot. I'm still using iOS 6, right? For crying out loud. What is it, iOS 9 out now? Like, I don't upgrade things at all. I was using Windows 7, and then randomly I'm like, you know what? They keep bothering me. Like, every, every time I log into my PC, you're like, hey, here's your free upgrade to Windows 10. I'm like, ah, screw it. We'll upgrade to it. And Windows 10, what it feels 
feels like is a modernized version of Windows 7. I did mess around with Windows 8 before. I hated Windows 8. Was not a fan of Windows 8 whatsoever. I did not like it. And Windows 10 is like a more modern version of Windows 7. They realized that yes, the Windows 7 way was like the way to go. It was a way better version at, uh, compared to Windows 8. And they're like, yeah, you should, we should make it more like that, but kind of modernize it up a little bit. And that's what they seem to have done. And I really, really enjoy it. I've actually had no troubles whatsoever. And I'm not saying your YouTube channel here, but you, going from what you said in your question, Mike from Connecticut, I would say the best course of action would probably be to reinstall Sony Vegas. Problem with that is, you probably didn't pay for Sony Vegas, as there's a lot of people. A lot of people don't pay don't pay for Sony Vegas. A lot of people illegally download Sony Vegas because it's like a five six hundred dollar program, and they just you know get a keylogger and like uh, get a version of it installed on their computer, and there you go. But uh, sad to say, that's probably the only solution is to reinstall Sony Vegas. You know, that's probably the thing you're gonna have to do because there's something apparently with uh, Vegas Pro 13 and Windows 10 that at least a version you have where everything's just not intertwining together. And if you guys know what Vegas Pro is, it is uh, the platform that we actually use to uh, make videos, right? It's uh, basically an editing software. It's what I use to make um, all my videos, and that's why I've been using to make my videos ever since I started YouTube, and a lot of other guys do that as well. The other big program would be Adobe Premiere. A lot of people use that as well, and some people that maybe don't necessarily make a lot of gaming videos are still using Windows Movie Maker. I have no idea how they're still using that, but uh, yeah, those are like the main programs people use to make their videos and edit their videos and things like that. So yeah, I definitely recommend trying to reinstall Vegas, but uh, chances are you didn't pay for it, and therefore you'd probably have to like, get a whole new download key and all that stuff. It sounds like it's going to be a lot of work, but overall, the reason I wanted to say this was one, that's probably going to be the, the answer you're looking for. It's probably going to be the solution to your problem, Mike, but the other reason I chose this question was I wanted to like, give my opinion on Windows 10. I really like it. I think Windows 10 is actually really, really nice. And again, that's coming from somebody that hates changes. I hate upgrading things. I don't like it. I still use iOS 6. I am so behind in that respect. My phone's an iPhone 4S at this point. Like I don't upgrade anything. I literally upgrade nothing in terms of technology, and so so even coming from me, someone that usually hates change, I like Windows 10. I went from Windows 7 to Windows 10. I did experience Windows 8 on other computers and stuff like that, and uh, I did not like it. But yeah, Windows 10 feels like a more modern version of Windows 7, and if you have like a free upgrade, I'd recommend taking it, because in my experience anyway, which I've had for, you know, almost a week now, uh, Windows 10 has been pretty fantastic. Next and final question, he's going to write, Dear Nero, I have gotten into the Borderlands series lately, and I'm wondering what is your favorite character and build for that character that is not... A DLC character, Logan from Iowa. So Logan, like, as I was reading your question, I was halfway through your question. It's like jumping to conclusions, right? I was halfway through your question, and you saw, like, what is your favorite character and build up that character. And I'm like, haha! I have an entire video over on my Let's Play channel with Melee Craig the Psycho, which is my favorite character to play and my favorite build for that character, where I go over the entire build. It's got well over 100,000 views. A lot of people have found that build to be particularly useful and very, very helpful. It's amazing. Like, if you guys have Craig the Psycho, I definitely recommend checking out that video, trying to build your Craig that way. I have a build for you for level 50, level 61, and level 72 uh, if you want to just max out that melee damage and it just dominate the entire storyline, dominate bosses and stuff like that. It's not going to be good for raid bosses, right? I, I even said specifically in that video, like, melee Craig, or just Craig in general, is not good against raid bosses, but it's really good against, like, everything else in the game. But uh, yeah, that's definitely my favorite build to play. But you're looking for a non-DLC character. I have actually have some of this stuff saved on my computer, some old photos uh, from when I was really, really into Portal and I used to mess around with the skill trees a lot. So my favorite character to play when I played back when I played on the Xbox was Axton, Axton the Commando. I thought he was really, really fun. And my favorite build to play with him was kind of like a kind of like a turret style of a build in a way. Like I basically I wanted to take Axton's turret, I wanted to max out that thing, just make it very powerful and kind of maximize the fact that I have a turret. You know, unlike any other characters in, in Borderlands 2 anyway, I have this cool turret I can throw down that has a lot of unique abilities. Let's make it so that thing is as powerful as humanly possible. So I call it like the turret engineer, and uh, this is just something I threw together today. These are builds that I think that would work. Now, I'm going to be showing you a level 50 build, a level 61 build, and a level 72 build, depending on what DLCs you have. You said you didn't want to buy a DLC characters. So that says to me, maybe you just have the base game, and therefore 50 is your level cap, so I'm showing you a, a build for level 50. And I'll show you a build for level 61, just in case you have that DLC, and level 72, just in case you have that DLC as well. So basically, the whole point of these builds, again, is to make Axton just a really, really good player with his turret, and that's the whole point of it, is to have that turret, have it constantly coming out, 
having it do tons of damage, having it buff you like crazy and stuff like that. Like, that's the whole point of it. But yeah, Axon's a really, really fun character to play as, and I actually kind of am getting the itch to go back to the Borderlands series. Like, occasionally, you know, I talk about Borderlands a lot here in Dear Nero, but it's because I played so much of that game. Like, I, I think I've said time and time again, it actually just came up on its third birthday, like its third year anniversary. Uh, Borderlands 2 is by far my favorite non-Call of Duty game. I love Borderlands 2. It is so freaking fun. Now, lately, I've been kind of getting the itch to go back and play, and now that I play on PC, I'm wondering if there's a way for me to, like, mod the files somehow to make the difficulty a little bit harder, because I want to go for, like, a hardcore, like, a hardcore survival style of a playthrough on Borderlands 2. I think that'd be really, really fun. I like surviving in games. I think that's, I think it's a fun aspect of games, and a game like Borderlands I've played through a million times, I think something that would make it a lot more fun and interesting, if I could somehow just up the difficulty a ton and make it so if you die once in your playthrough, you're dead, and then go through with, like, with, like a couple of friends if they die, then have them, like, permanently die, like, have them drop out of the call, the Skype call or whatever, so they're no longer in the playthrough, and it's like their character actually died, and we continue on and just do our best to, you know, get all the guns we can, all the upgrades we can, and try and play perfectly to the point that we don't die. I'm hoping for it to be really hard and really intense, uh, similar to maybe, like, a, like a hardcore playthrough or something like that They're on, um on Diablo, something along those lines, but who knows if I'm, if I'm actually even able to do that, but I just think it'd be fun to go back, and if I were to go back, I might want to play as Axe again, because how my my, my like see, my experience with Borderlands has always been like, I played on the 360, the original Borderlands, I got Borderlands 2 for the 360, and I kept playing that, and then once I finally like, got, like upgraded my PC after I was in a YouTube for a couple of years, I then got Borderlands 2 on the PC with like my upgrade, my updated graphics card and whatnot, and playing the game on Ultra settings and stuff, and it's so much freaking fun, so much freaking fun but back when i always played on the 360 axton was my guy and on the pc uh krig was my guy so i think it'd be fun to be able to go back and play around with that game especially since we have like another month before black ops 3 comes out and everyone's really just kind of like experimenting with a lot of different games uh, i think it might be fun to go back and play some borderlands 2 who knows but let me know in the comments uh, with this like particular time of the year this weird time of the year you know basically september in october and what's there of november where the older call of duty games kind of like ah, eh, we don't really want to play that as much anymore and people are just really looking forward to the new one like what other games are you guys playing currently are you guys still playing advanced warfare are you still playing call of Duty, or are you playing some other games that released recently, or you've gone back to some old favorites? Like, what games are you guys playing right now? I'm just interested. Let me know if that in the comment section below. And I hope you guys all enjoyed this week's episode of Dear Nero. If you guys would like to submit your questions for next week's episode of Dear Nero, simply send me a personal message here on YouTube. Very, very simple, guys. Go to my YouTube channel, go to the About tab, and from there you'll find the Send Message button. And from there, send your message. If I can just give you one recommendation, it would be to preface your message with Dear Nero. That way, while I'm scrolling through my messages, I can easily identify the ones that were specifically sent for Dear Nero. But yeah, I thought that was a fun little episode. It seems to be a little bit shorter than usual. Actually, no. As I'm looking at the timer here, it's just about on time. It felt like it was shorter. Maybe it's because I really liked all the questions and it just felt like time was flying by. But yeah, it looks like we're right on, right on par with about a 30-minute episode. And hopefully you guys all enjoy it because I definitely enjoy making Dear Nero every single week. Well, once again, hope you guys all enjoy this week's episode. Remember to leave a rating. I hope you guys all have a wonderful day.